Um, well, somebody who's getting ready to head out the door at this time is your old friend, Harley Race. He's coming off surgery, and he'll make a brief return in 1988 before leaving the company following the Rumble. Apparently, Harley is citing road fatigue as one of the reasons he was leaving, which really kind of stuck out to me as I was reading about it, because we're talking about a guy who was the traveling NWA world champion, and now here he is in the WWF, and he's like, hey, this travels too much. It's man, uh, that is that yeah. really speaks volumes. What can you tell us about how brutal the travel was here in in the late eighties? Oh the gosh, uh, I mean, you know, when I started, some of the guys told me they said, Ted, they said, the first couple of years when he was just trying to, he said it was even worse, and I said worse, yeah, it was worse. I mean, I mean, they would be on the road sometimes for, I mean, like. Weeks on end, you know, like, I mean, could you imagine going on the road and not, not getting home for two months? Oh my gosh. You know, but, uh, by the time I got there, they, they, they had started to whittle it down and they, it, it, back then when I first started, it was three weeks on the road and a week off. So it was 21 days, 21 cities. Oh, that's brutal. Yes. Oh, I mean, you know, I, I would wake up at hotel sometimes and and lay there a minute and go, okay, where the hell am I? And I would actually roll over on the, you know, in, in the, the in the hotel rooms. There's a nameplate on the on the phone, and it's got the the name of the hotel and the phone number. And I would have to, sometimes I'd roll over and go, oh, okay, I'm in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, it's just absolute insanity what you guys yeah. are doing out there on the road. And it's like, you know, you're living that rock star lifestyle. Of course, you're going to do rock star things like maybe take an upper to, to be able to make the next town or, you know, OK, I need to blow off some steam after the show. You go and get drunk with your friends. So it's like it's 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 no wonder that there were so many issues going on in these yeah. days. Yeah. And, and, you know, talking to Jake about this whole thing, he had said, uh, you know, I'd, I'd mentioned this about Harley and he was like, well, here's the difference. He's like, Harley was the traveling NWA champion, but he might work whatever, three days if uh, during that travel week. He's like, we were working every single day. He's like, so, yep, we're, we, he's traveling about as much as, as before, yeah. but now he's got to work every day as opposed to maybe three or four days a week. Well, and uh, I don't know, uh, I, again, I know that when uh, the NWA champion would come to the Amarillo territory, and that's where I was during the time that uh, Harley was champion. He was, he wrestled every night. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it was like he came in and he he would wrestle whoever the top baby face at the time was, you know, and every night they'd go an hour. Now, you know, I don't know. he, He may have had to have a couple of, travel days or whatever, but the, the life of the, the world champion. Now the other, the, it's like the, okay, the WWF world champion was only the world champion in the WWF. Mm-hmm. The AWA world champion was only the world champion in the AWA territory. The NWA world champion was the world champion in territories all over the country that's the difference a lot of pressure a lot of expectation uh so man it's incredible that he guys like him and terry funk and all the others rick flair were able to do it at the at the level they did for as long as they did 